that point, the topic for today is uh, vision for the future, purposes, the rainbow nation. Vision for the future is, uh, in my view, very important point. But I believe that each one have individual visions for future. And the nations and the people or groups, they do also have uh, common visions. And uh, the different nation or different uh, society, different culture, might have a particular different visions for each one of them. Therefore, there's no way to uh, make a, a common vision for every human beings on this earth. But in spite of that, we can have uh, our own way of vision, which is applicable to every sentient being. So our tradition or my suggestion would be we shall have a we shall have a vision which sees which uh, images a violence free society among the humanity violence free and free from all kind of conflicts living together and in oneness that could be vision at least for all of us at this moment. Many today's people think that this vision is uh, utopian, unachievable. But we the Buddhists do not think in that way because uh, each sentient being has uh, by nature a priority of mind and their mind is uh, have a capacity to achieve uh, freedom from all conditions. If our mind is freedom, get freedom from all negative emotions, then a no violence and a cooperative society is uh, possible. Of course, it cannot be achieved in five years or ten years or hundred years. We shall have to keep this vision very uh, long spell of time. The way through which all the uh, thousand years through which we have come down, our minds are conditioned. Similarly, the process of deconditioning our mind will also take uh, the similar time period. The method through which this vision to be achieved would be to begin from oneself, to purify oneself, and to decondition oneself, and oneself is get freedom from negative emotions, then that individual is capable of making others also do the similar thing. The idea of a better we, better world is also in that way. First, we make better me, then we can make it better we, and thereafter we will be able to make better the world. The prophecies are important and it give us great hope. But to understand as far as the prophecies available in Tibetan culture is concerned, we are not able to understand the prophecies correctly until it actually happened. So we shall have to um, we shall have to try to understand the purposes and then we shall also should make efforts to become the purposes in reality. The last, the rainbow nation is a very beautiful uh, idea and expression. All the nations could become the colors of rainbow 
and uh, which become in a very cohesive way to appear and remain inseparable with each other. But today, what people call the nationalism, particularly some of the nations are indoctrinating a different kind of nationalism in their people and which creates a lot of division and conflict. My late friend, a great philosopher, you might have heard, Jiddu Krishnamurti, one Indian um, sage. He was invited by the UNESCO to give a talk in the UN headquarter uh, in, um, in, in America. So he started his presentation saying that nations can never be united. The sense of nation is a source of division. So <laughs> sometimes it, it seems to be true. Anyhow, the nations are a reality and uh, we uh, make it um, possible to unite with each other without any difference, dif difference way of thinking in the form of nationalism. My other late friend was a, a Catholic priest and also Professor Ramon Padinkar, who used to say that religions should be remain in religiousness, but we developed around it a religiosity, and that religiosity later on bring on religionism. When the religionism comes there, then all kind of divisions are started. So similarly, we must remain as a human being, which may belong to any kind of nation, but the nationality should be a facility to join with other nations, to be um, harmonious with other nations, with other people. And by that way, the, the, the grasping to uh, some kind of a separate nationali nationality should not be cause of division or differentiation. So finally, we all here to look for a common vision that we can discuss in this dialogue. And then for that common vision, we can uh, find out how each one of us separately and also jointly with other can do something to achieve that vision. And that would be uh, the a kind of uh, result or conclusion of this seminar. Thank you for your attention. Tibetan Buddhist viewpoint, the uh, male and the female are actually inseparable. And without uh, union of these two nature, a person cannot be a complete person. But the difference between male and female is in which the female uh, nature is uh, dominating, that becomes female, in which person the male uh, nature is dominating, then that becomes male. That difference is only at the level of the uh, unenlightened stage. When they become Buddha, at Buddha le level, there's no difference. They cannot be separate the male and female. We call it Sungju, union. Then uh, outside the uh, universe, the moon represents uh, coldness and uh, liquidness. The sun represents the solidness and uh, warmness. So therefore, moon is uh, more related to female 
and sun is more related to male. In general, the moon and sun both very closely related to uh, all sentient beings in their realm, in their well, the solar system. So they have a certain um, contribution to uh, make the things uh, exist or remain. Then the sun clips or moon clips uh, occurred. That is due to uh, their movement or the earth movement. The earth's shadow is coming to them. Uh, so therefore, it is considered to be something particular movement which has uh, which can uh, which can um, affect or which can stimulate the positive forces in uh, living beings. Therefore, in a Buddhist tradition, the day when they have moon cleave or sun cleave, they do a lot of prayers and uh, good work. They think it will earn much more merit. But no Buddhist Indian tradition that is basically called Vedic, they believe the otherwise. During the sun cleave or moon cleave, they do not do prayers or uh, any religious ceremony. So this morning, they announced that uh, the period of the cliff is started 9.30 or 9.45 and it will remain till uh, 10 a.m. next morning, during which period people will not uh, go out or not take uh, long journeys, something like that. No. Um, they choose the Buddha Jayanti day for the function and it is coincides with the moon cliff. But they do not um, uh, follow the instructions of Pandit. They, they come out and they do all these things. They are not very orthodox. <laughs> the Tibetan culture, there is no specific uh, um, specific, uh, what I should say, rules for the farmers to relate to moon or to sun. But all the farmers have their own village astrologers. They look uh, into the calendar and also the uh, movement of all the stars. So they will decide when the crops are to be cut, when the um, fields are to be ploughed, and when the seeds are sown, when the water is to be given. All these are they look to the calendar and uh, in accordance with the uh, movements of the uh, stars and sun and moon and the earth. By that they will find which is um, appropriate time and which is uh, not appropriate time. Sometimes they may not find the best time, but they always try to avoid the bad times, bad dates. Among the flowers and plants, there are divisions. Some of the flowers are related to sun, some of the flowers are related to moon. When sun rises, the flowers are open. Then sun sets, it is closed. And similarly, when moon comes, the flowers are open. And similarly, some tree, when the sun is shining, the leaves are open. And in the night, the leaves are being closed. So in the, in the trees and the flowers, we can find different connection with the sun and moon. But among the food crops, I don't know. There's no such relationship is described. The meditators, usually the meditators, to find out a good guide or teacher and remain with that teacher for a lifelong time or otherwise for 10, 12, 20 years. And with uh, guidance of that teacher, then each day the meditator does meditation. And whenever there's some hindrance or problem, they can go to the teacher for guidance. So 
Mm. By that way, people grow into meditation and the uh, deepest meditation can be achieved. Thereby, the meditation of Buddhist meditation is remained within the uh, <coughs> close circle of monks who have uh, already given up all worldly uh, engagements or attachments, then live into a monastery or live into the uh, remote places and uh, dedicate throughout life for the meditation. So that is why it, uh, it was not very popular among the common man. During the early part of the 20th century, one of the Burmese senior monks said that in the modern time, no one will be uh, able to uh, devote throughout life for meditation or religious practice. Therefore, we should make some uh, innovation into the meditation system and he come out with the 10 days meditation course, 12 days and 20 days, 40 days, so that ordinary people, laymen, even the uh, industry workers can find some time out and go to the meditation centers and uh, to take tenders course by which they can get a preliminary knowledge and then in their life half an hour, one hour in the morning can be spent for in individual meditation. So this become quite popular. Now it is uh, internationally renowned. The 10 days course is uh, attended by many people. Taking an idea from this uh, kind of short course, the Tibetan masters uh, after 1960, the Tibetan tradition of Buddhism also spread it all over the world. Now many Tibetan masters has uh, developed five days, ten days, and fifteen days course for meditation. So it is uh, available everywhere. So anyone really interested to know how to meditate, then it is better to attend a short course and uh, thereby a basic uh, techniques of meditation can be known and then thereafter self-practice can be possible. If I just make a few um, um, examples of a few, few sentences how to begin meditation, the Buddhist meditation begins to uh, examination of the uh, intention and motivation why one is uh, wanted to meditate. So it may be for the worldly benefit this life's benefit for health reasons. These are also can can meditate for these purposes, but that is not uh, the real sense of meditation in the spiritual realm. For example, in India, there are many industry workers have been sent to the Vipassana ten days course just in in order to increase uh, uh, harmony in the labor force and also increase uh, the uh, efficiency of the work. This can be sometimes uh, considered as a misuse of meditation. Meditation is for the development of inner spirit and uh, evolve a person into the spirituality. The first step is uh, to examine one's intention and the intention is proper, then they need a determination to practice it as far as possible. The second step is uh, to find uh, a suitable place, environment suitably, quiet and uh, solitude, no disturbance of noise or something like that, to find a good place for meditation and at the same time uh, to learn the physical discipline, when should take the meals, how much should take the meals, how to be uh, keep body clean, and um, uh, how things should be uh, surrounding, and how in in what posture should we sit for the meditation. These are the prelimin preliminary things to learn, and also 
to uh, decide a time schedule when and how much time you will spend for the meditation. Then fourth stage finally the postures are decided and then to make the body uh, fit for meditation little bit of uh, breathing exercise pranayama so that the uh, body is also make fit for the meditation. Thereafter when enter into the real meditation the meditation can be uh, classified in two groups. One is uh, contemplative analytical meditation, the other is concentrative, just concentrate to one object. So then for the concentration meditation you have to find an object and analytical meditation you also find a subject on which you are uh, analyzing, inquiring. So then according to that you can proceed with the real meditation. Then on that process there will be some hindrances or problems, problems may come. Then one should read the books which are giving the guides or one should consult some guidance, some guide. The time is reached 12.30, so I think now we should meditate for our food. Individual has the potential to be enlightened. That means whatever positive effort which is uh, performed with the intention to achieve matter of enlightenment, that itself is contribution to one's own enlightenment as well as for the common vision. Whatever an individual person performs a positive action with the intention to benefit the entire sentient being, that is the greatest contribution first to evolution of oneself. Evolution of one's oneself does not mean it is evolved only a single person. The single person is related to all sentient beings as interrelatedly. So therefore improvement of one person is improvement of the contributor of the entire sentient being. In a ten man's group, one is one is improved. That means the group is begin to improve. One member is improved. So therefore, whatever a person do for one's own betterment, but that need to be for the purpose of enlightenment of entire sentient being. That is the real contribution. Whatever a positive karmic force or positive action is uh, acted, then in the end of the day that positive karma should be dedicated for one's own enlightenment for the sake of entire sentient beings enlightenment then that coming force will never be wasted <laughs>